had a lot of hope for the year 2023. That was the year I told myself that was going to be different. After months of that year going the same as the years prior, on October 1st, I decided to pack up my car last minute to go camping in Colorado to see the autumn leaves. I dreaded my hometown and just needed some time away to hopefully gain some perspective. I loved Colorado and just having an open road and fresh eyes on the world. I loved the idea that in order to become someone you've never been, you must go places you've never gone. Those thoughts pushed me to drive further into Utah, then to Zion National Park, and then to the coast of California where I lived for the next four months. Those thoughts made me push the horizons of my comfort zone. I was living with a family and coaching baseball, but after finding myself being brought into difficult personal situations with the family, I decided it was no longer what I wanted. So I pulled all my remaining savings and decided to make the 25 hour drive back to Omaha, Nebraska. I felt like I was admitting defeat. I felt like the life I wanted was just around the corner and I was giving up on it. I felt like what I needed was courage and if I just had that, then things would have worked out. But I missed home. I missed my childhood dog that had just passed away when I was gone. I just accepted the reality that traveling is expensive and I was never gonna see a lot of the places I've dreamed about. I just tried to be okay with it. I found a job and started looking back into going to school. I reconnected with old friends and made peace with the past. I started putting my heart back into friendships and started to feel optimistic about living in my hometown. Quick little update. I picked up like a hitchhiker and I brought her to the store to get some milk. I'm like hiking through the fucking rainforest right now. Okay, basically, I picked up this hitchhiker on the remote parts of Maui, like the volcanic rock part of Maui, to bring her to the store to get milk because she finds that it nurtures her. And she was like, I can show you this cool local hike. And I was like, oh my god, my Maui bestie, like, let's go. But then she backs down halfway through the hike, tells me to stay close to the edge to get the best view. And that's where I'm realizing, okay, I met you on the road. So there's an animal walking, and I'm paranoid that it's Spirit, my Maui bestie, who's totally ascended from her birth name. Because that's not trackable or legit or anything, and I don't know where I'm at. Like this is like, I mean, you know what I mean? Like they set up the camera and they're standing here and they just get fucking mauled. Oh god. <laughs> After a few good months back in Omaha, my friend graduated her flight attendant training. She told me there was an emphasis on giving her buddy pass to someone that is going to utilize it to the fullest potential. I can't tell you how grateful I am to have received that and how feasible it's made my dreams feel. I'm so excited to combine my passion of writing into videography while exploring the world and I hope you will tap in to watch my journey. There is a downside. You don't really know when or if you will get on a flight. However, I lived in my car for five months so I am prepared to make do with any sleeping circumstances I find myself in. I've never been a good planner, but I am good at making the best out of any bad situation. Welcome to my fort. Do you want to come in? Stop, guys. This is so stellar. We're starting with the crackers. Um, alright, 
so what happened? So I get, mm, they smell, they smell like it only costs them 30 cents in revenue. <laughs> So I get here, and they're like, your flight's been delayed till 11. Like, oh, 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 yeah, I don't care. Bye, mommy. But then they met at 11 a.m. So then like, oh, we're gonna get you a hotel. And I'm like, you're gonna get me a hotel? I'm just standing by. And they're like, oh, we're not gonna get you a hotel. I'm like, great, I'm sitting here. So I was like, standing outside, and I was like, I'm gonna cry because I don't know where to fucking go because I already returned my rental car. I have a ton of luggage and I don't know what to do with it and they want me to check the luggage. And then now the line's super long, but I'm like, fuck, there's a flight going out to LA tonight. Like I can go get on that flight. So I have to take my giant bags through TSA. I end up throwing away like my shampoo, my conditioner, just so I can get through. So goodbye, all that stuff. I have to buy new ones. Fuck. But at least I made it in and I got to sleep tonight. Or I get to the LA flight and I'm like, can I get on this? Um, like, no, it's full. So I'm like, fuck. Well, I'm like, it's talking to the lady. So I'm just like, how's your day going? Like, I'm visiting Maui. Like, you live here. That's so cool. Oh, yada, yada, yada. And then she, she goes, she receives, like, information that two people are getting kicked off the flight because they're, like, suspected, like, hijackers. And I'm like, oh my god, like, I can get on the flight. And they're like, no, because your luggage. And I'm like, Fuck my luggage. I'm like, fucking leave it here. So that was my flight. That was my way to go home. I didn't get on it because of my luggage. So rip. And the reason why my flight got delayed is because on the LAX flight, there's someone famous. Like there's a famous basketball player. We need to get home. So they took one of our flight attendants. Dude, why don't you so mad? I'm like, dude, I need to fucking get home. In my mind, I'm fucking royalty. So, I feel like I'm in the coolest place ever. Like, this is the kind of the most luxury stay I've had in Maui yet. What a fucking bore. I'm hoping I can get on the 11 o'clock flight because then I might be able to like make it to work. I am ready to present to the gate agent as you board your plane. Those good chargers, the fast new ones with the plate they're long. This could be good. And today I found a North Face coat, a North Face coat, like a jacket, a great one. Just sitting there. How is it? It's 12 o'clock. Remember like Gibby? Well, 
Scott show. I always associate Gibby with the phases of the moon. Oh, I don't know. Because my brother's teacher taught him that. Waxy Gibbous. Waning Gibbous. When he's taking on his shirt, he's taking it off. When he's putting it on, waning Gibbous. He's taking it off. Waxing Gibbous. When he's bigger, he's all fat. Right there on top of the moon We could sit and do nothing I wish we were both To just fly away I don't wanna care It's being I'm good alone I'll be okay, miss you like an old friend Too scared now, thinking I should call up It appears we've got some cows. Can you be with me in the last moments of life? And for those wondering about Spirit, after the hike I found her sleeping in the bench underneath the temple. I'm glad I had the opportunity to meet her. It's very inspiring meeting people who don't comply to the norms, who follow their beliefs, who devote their life to searching for deeper meaning. She had a lot of wisdom. She spent the night prior sleeping in a porta potty to try and escape the venomous centipedes that got into her tent because she had a ripped screen. I hope she's doing well. I gave her $100 so she could buy a new tent after we spent the entire day talking about life and exploring the island. We helped each other. It takes so much courage to continue doing that when you have a way out. When you don't have to live like that, but choose to. Thank you.